Hello and welcome back everyone. My name is Evan Daly and I make game dev tutorials for the interwebs. In this episode, uh, in this series, we're making shields with the Amplify Shader Editor. And uh, in, in today's episode, I'm breaking down the hit effect as the ball bounces off the shield. Um, you can kind of see that there's that little flash on the surface. Um, and uh, the principles from today's lessons could be applied to other materials. Um, pretty much anytime you need some sort of effect in a localized area of a material. Um, that's what this will be good for, so why don't we just dive in. Um, also, I'm, I'm posting this video as episode 2 out of 5, but this series might take more than 5 episodes. Uh, I had a pretty long day at work today, so I'm not I'm not going to cover too much in this episode, and uh, I'm not sure how, how the rest of the week is going to play out, but we'll, we'll just play by ear and hopefully it goes well. Um, so I'm going into E14 Shield Part 1. And uh, if you want access to this scene and the materials we create here, you can find it on GitHub. I think it'll be github.com slash evandaily slash random small projects. Now I'm going to add a sphere to this scene. And uh, we're going to create a amplify shader effect where um, basically we give it a vertex position and it will be in local space to the object. And so this is the x direction, this is the y direction, and this is the z direction local to this object. So if I open up an image, um, like, like let's say we feed it this point, so that would be like 0, zero, zero 001, and then we're going to have a range around that where the effect actually happens. So if we gave it 0, zero 001, this whole part of the sphere would be affected. Um, but if we give it a point out here, nothing's going to happen because the sphere of influence is not touching our object. So keep that in mind when you start feeding these values later. Um, I'm going to scale this up to 3 just so we can see it better. And I'm going to save the scene. And now I'm going to right click and create an Amplify Shader Editor. Or sorry, an Amplify Shader. Uh, surface shader. And uh, when I name these, I usually, I usually like to prepend it with Evan Daily. It just makes it a little easier to organize. So I'm going to say Evan Daily slash test slash shield one. And I think I might have a one already. Why don't we just make that Evan Daily slash shield one? And compile. And now, that's not on this yet. We need to assign that to a material and put the material on an object. So I'm dropping that in episode 14. Creating the material. Shield 1. Shield 1 shader. Alright, so now I'm going to drop the material onto the, onto the sphere. And then I'm going to assign the shader to that material. Evan Daily slash shield one. Alright, so now it's just solid black. And uh, that's progress. Um, in Later in the series, we're going to need this to be set to transparent. So we might as well go ahead and take care of that. Transparent and transparent for both the render type and the render queue. And now, essentially what we need to do is feed in a vertex position and then compare that to the the vertices on the surface of this object so the the vertex at the top that'll be like zero zero one out here let's see this is the x-axis so this would be one zero zero and then out here this would be zero I guess this would be zero zero one because this is the y-axis so this would be zero one zero Sorry about that. Hope that wasn't too confusing. Anyway, um, we're gonna feed it a vertex position, and then we're gonna compare um, at, at every vertex on this object. We're gonna compare how far they are to that um, position that we fed in, and then we're gonna color it based on that. So to do that, uh, we need a vertex position node vertex position. Now if I highlight this, it says Vertex Position Vector in Object Space. And so again, what that's saying is this sphere 
is on a scale of one. So we've got one unit this way, one unit this way, one unit straight toward the camera. And uh, if we rotate this object, its local axis rotates as well. And so the, the position relative to the axis won't change. Th this is purely local space and uh, we don't have to worry about scaling or anything like that. Um, and, and keep in mind, we did scale this up by three but the top is still one because it is local. And then we want a distance as well as a vector three. And uh, I'm gonna make this vector three property, or I'm gonna make this vector three node a property. And uh, since it's a property, it'll be public and we can feed a value into that through a C sharp script. And I'm just, I'm just going to name it hit position. And uh, now all we have to do is add a compare as well as a float. And so the float is going to go into B. The distance is going to go into A. And so this will be hit size. And now it's going to compare these two values. So we've got a distance. This is the distance from the point that we fed in. So that's the distance from here to any of these given pixels. So right here, it's a pretty small distance. From, from this vertex to here, it's a small distance. From here to here, it's a like a 0.5. I guess uh, from here to here would be a 0.5. And then from here to here, it would be a, a 1. Um, so, so using these distances for every single vertex on the model, um, now we can compare that against the hit size. And uh, this compare node, whatever we feed into the true, is what's going to leave this node when this condition is true. So if, if A is less than B, we're going to output whatever we feed in here. If A is greater than B, we're going to output whatever we feed in here. So just as a quick test, we can do 5 left click, 5 left click to give two colors. And I'll feed one into true and one into false. So if it's true, let's see, A is the distance from, from one vertex to the vertex that we fed in. If that is less than the hit size, and we'll, why don't we just do a 0.5 here. If that's less than the hit size, we know that we are within this circle, right? We know we're in here. So in that case, um, that'll be true. So why don't we give that a color like we just got hit with a bullet. So that'll be red. And then if that's not the case, we know that we're outside of this circle. We're somewhere out here. Uh, why don't we just default to black? Now we'll feed that into the albedo and compile. And uh, you can see that by default, um, it's completely red. So why don't we set, um, set some more values here. Now I want to make sure this is a property. Yes, it is. And uh, why don't we make this a property as well? So the hit size, th that's something that we should be able to edit in the inspector. So that's going to be a property. And uh, we might as well do that with the colors as well. And we could do textures here, um, but for now, we'll just keep it simple. All right, so we've got shield one. You can see our hit position is zero, zero, zero. So that's right at the center of the model. Now, if we push this up in the Y direction, that'll be up here because it is local space. Uh, why don't we set that to 0.5? And so that's the point right at the top of the model because zero is in the middle, 0.5 is at the top, and negative 0.5 is at the bottom. And all right, you can see, uh, you can see that it it is coloring the model, so the math worked out correctly. Now, if I do 0.5 here, now the point is kind of like off in this area. Um, so if we go too too much further in that direction. We're not going to be on the model anymore, um, but yeah, you, you guys, you guys get what I, you guys get the point. Um, so I think that's about it for this video. Um, 
We're going to use that in the next video to shoot projectiles at the model and then actually have these like flash to life as the, as the shield takes damage. Um, but I, I think I kept it off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing the video. Uh, and also let me know in the comments below what you thought and what you think I could improve on. Thanks again. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.